the dark secret no one wants to tell. Today, we're diving into a topic that is a true taboo in the world of ornithology, the oxidation of the horny parts in London fancy canaries. I've already shown you the beauty of these birds and why they're worth a fortune, but what many don't know is that behind that intensely black beak and those legs, there's a dark secret that most top breeders don't want you to discover. The world of London fancy canary breeding is fiercely competitive, and the perfection of each bird is crucial. To achieve this perfection, many breeders resort to techniques and products that are, to say the least, controversial. Some consider them a trick, an easy way to achieve a standard that pure genetics didn't give them. But the truth is, without this process, most London fancies wouldn't reach their full potential. If you want to know what products and techniques are behind this shocking phenomenon, Stay with me until the end. Leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a second of this controversial analysis. The DNA behind the color. The mystery of melanin. The first thing you need to understand, and which is the basis for the rest of this video, is that the oxidation of the horny parts is not a trick. It is the result of centuries of genetic work. A London fancy's ability to have a black beak and legs is written in its DNA. Think of melanin as the ink the canary's body produces. In a common color canary, this ink spreads throughout the plumage. In the London fancy, the mutation that makes the melanin disappear from the body after molting does not affect the horny parts. Therefore, if your canary doesn't have that strong genetics, no matter what product or technique you use, it will never have a champion's beak and legs. Many beginner breeders buy birds from weak lineages and then blame the product for not working. But the truth is, the product only enhances genetics that already exist. The mystery of melanin is the starting point for perfection, and those who master this secret, master the art of breeding a true show-quality London fancy. The exact moment of oxidation, and why haste is fatal. When it comes to oxidizing the horny parts, the greatest danger is not at the beginning of the process. Many beginner breeders, eager to see the result, make a fatal mistake, placing the chicks under direct sunlight during their first 40 days of life. The skin and horny parts of the chicks are still extremely sensitive, and direct sun exposure at this stage can cause burns, irreversible damage, and even the loss of color in the parts that should be black. Patience is the key. From about 30 to 40 days, when the juvenile plumage is already complete and the canary is more robust, the oxidation process with sun exposure should be done gradually, in small daily sessions, preferably during the morning sun, which is less abrasive. Remember, the London fancy is a delicate bird. A careful approach is a virtue that is directly reflected in the final quality of your canary. The magic solution. The secret of plants and the sun. Now that you know that genetics are the basis for everything, the big question is, what products and techniques are really used to enhance oxidation? Forget the idea of a single magic product. The secret, my friends, lies in a combination of natural elements and the administration of oxidizing pigments that act on the entire body of the bird, from the plumage to the horny parts. These products, often in powder or liquid form, are formulated based on elements such as the polygonum alberti plant, algae, and other oxidants that stimulate the production and fixation of melanin. They are administered regularly, in the drinking water or food, from the chick's first days of life until the exhibition season. The key is not external application, but rather the internal nutrition of the bird. And this process is complemented by exposure to sunlight, which works as a natural catalyst, activating the pigments and intensifying the color. But, and this is the most important point, if the birds do not descend from good genetics, it will be useless to administer these products or place them in the sun. The product is a tool, but the hand that uses it is the real magic. The importance of the sun in the pigmentation of the horny parts. We've already talked about genetics and products, but there is a natural catalyst, an essential element that many people forget, the sun. The horny parts, that is, the beak, legs, and nails of the London fancy, do not achieve their maximum pigmentation with only the products administered in their food. Sunlight is the factor that activates and fixes melanin. It is crucial to understand that the sun is not a substitute for genetics. If your bird does not have the DNA that allows it to pigment, the sun will not perform miracles. But for a bird with the correct genetics, the sun is the engine of the process. The ideal is for the birds to be exposed for periods of about one hour a day, during the morning or late afternoon sun, when the light is less intense and safer for the bird. 
This exposure is the catalyst that will allow all the administered oxidation products to effectively take effect and ensure that your canary reaches perfection. Hidden Danger The Most Common Myths and Mistakes The pursuit of perfection leads many breeders to make serious mistakes. I've already shown you that genetics and timing are crucial, but now let's talk about the hidden dangers, the most common myths and mistakes that can ruin your canary. The first myth is that any dark product works. No. Using hair dye, coffee, or other household products is a dangerous mistake. These substances do not have the correct composition and can be toxic or cause severe allergic reactions, permanently damaging the bird's plumage and skin. The second mistake is thinking that sun exposure is the only solution. Without the right genetics and the administration of pigments, the bird will not oxidize correctly. They believe the London fancy will figure it out on its own, but that rarely happens. The third mistake, and perhaps the most frustrating, is using the product inconsistently. Oxidation requires routine and patience. Skipping days or applying unevenly will result in an irregular color and a stained beak. The dangers are not just in the products, but in the lack of knowledge and dedication. The diet that boosts darkening. When talking about black horny parts, most people think of products, but what many don't know is that the secret starts long before the application. It starts in the diet. What the London Fancy Canary eats can either boost or inhibit its ability to pigment, and top breeders master this nutritional science. It's not enough to just give common food. A diet rich in elements that stimulate the natural production of melanin in the bird's body is needed. There are specific seeds, plant extracts, and even vitamin supplements that are added to the feed, designed to strengthen the pigmentation. They contain natural pigments that work in synergy with the bird's genetics to intensify the color. However, and this is a crucial point, the diet is a catalyst, not a solution. If your canary doesn't have the strong genetics to pigment, the most expensive diet in the world won't work miracles. The specialized diet is just another piece in the complex puzzle of perfection. The importance of not administering antioxidant products and activated charcoal during the oxidation process. I have already revealed what needs to be done to oxidize the horny parts, but just as important as knowing what to add to the diet is knowing what to remove. Many breeders make a colossal mistake that nullifies all their effort. They administer antioxidant products and, even worse, use grit with activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is a powerful filter that the bird's bodies use to remove toxins and impurities. However, in our case, it will have the opposite effect of what is desired, as it will filter out and prevent the fixation of the oxidizing products in the bird's liver, preventing the melanin from settling and darkening the horny parts. Furthermore, administering antioxidant products in the bird's diet during the oxidation process will nullify the effect of the administered oxidizing products, making their use pointless. Antioxidants by nature, fight oxidation. It is a chemical war within the bird's body, and in the end, the effort and money spent will be in vain. The key to perfection is not only in giving but also in protecting the process. The true secret is the total management of the diet, ensuring that nothing interferes with the pursuit of perfect color. The fake London fancy. How to identify fraud. Fraud in the rare bird market is a real danger, but an experienced breeder can identify a genetically weak London Fancy Canary right in its first days of life. The truth is that the signs of a fake London Fancy don't just appear in adulthood, they are visible from the start. Look out for these four signs that can ruin a bird's potential. Unpigmented horny parts, a genetically weak chick will not have its beak, legs, and nails minimally oxidized, dark. The absence of pigment is a clear sign of a deficient melanic base. Lipochrome feathers on wings and tail. The presence of yellow or white feathers in the areas that should be black, the wing and tail feathers, is a fatal indicator of poor genetics. Contrast is the breed's signature, and the mix of colors is a serious defect. Washed out plumage color. A top London fancy has a vibrant and intense base color, yellow or white. If the bird's body color is washed out or faded, its genetics are weak. Brown melanic feathers. The most distinctive trait of the London Fancy is its intense, black melanin. If the wing and tail feathers are more brown than black, the bird does not have the necessary pigment purity. Knowing these signs is your best defense against fraud and the guarantee that your investment is in a true, high-quality specimen. London Fancy Canaries with White Nails A genetic error? I've already told you about the black horny parts as a sign of perfection, 
but there is a genetic error that many breeders, especially beginners, can ignore, white males. In some cases, a London fancy, which would otherwise be perfect, may have one or even a few white nails, breaking the melanic uniformity that the breed requires. This anomaly, as small as it may seem, is a serious defect. A bird with white nails, even if all other characteristics are impeccable, is not fit to participate in exhibitions. In addition to being an immediate disqualification, it is a sign of a flaw in its genetics. The most worrying thing is that this flaw can be passed down to its offspring, perpetuating the error in your flock. Therefore, our recommendation is clear. No matter how beautiful the bird is, if it has white nails, do not use it for breeding. The purification of your flock begins with strict selection, eliminating this defect to ensure that future generations of your aviary achieve perfection. The price of perfection. Is the obsession worth it? After all I have revealed to you, from the secret of the black parts to the dangers of fraud, we arrive at the big question. Is it worth it? The London fancy, with all its complexity, with the challenges of genetics, oxidation, and diet, is a bird that demands everything from a breeder. It demands time, money, and above all, a passion that borders on obsession. The price of a show-quality London fancy does not just reflect its beauty. It reflects a year of intense work, sleepless nights, research, and a dedication that most people do not understand. It is the price of knowledge, experience, and the perseverance of a breeder. For me, the answer is a resounding yes. Because the value of a London fancy canary is not measured in euros, but in the satisfaction of achieving the impossible, bringing a piece of history to life and creating something that approaches perfection. If this journey has inspired you, leave your like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next chapter, and tell me in the comments. For you, is it a fair price for perfection?